Hi, everybody. Hello. Good evening. I'm going to be doing a demo for you. I'm going to be showing you how uh, to make some avocados, but from cake. Why not? I love making illusion cakes. They're so much fun. So I've actually carved my avocados from cake. So I stacked these in advance and I filled them and I refrigerated the cake. Um, this is an old demo cake. I will be honest, it was in the it was in the fridge for, for tonight's purposes. But this is exactly how I would uh, do it ordinarily. And I always refrigerate my cakes because there's so much easier to to carve. Now, you'll see in the screen that I actually have an avocado. Yeah. So whenever I'm doing illusion cake work, where possible, I will always try and get the actual thing. At the very least, I'll have a photograph of it. Um, but when I'm working with something like that, I just find it so much easier to have the visual, you know, in front of me. And because the cake is chilled, because it's pre-filled, I can carve it uh, like this in the 3D, you know, quite, quite easily. OK, um, so this is cake, which I've actually laid with a little bit of ganache here. And I'm going to be using, uh, obviously, my innovative sugar works, uh, sugar shapers and brushes for tonight's demo. And I'm also going to be using modeling chocolate, which is our very own um, uh, modeling chocolate uh, called candy clay. So I'm just kind of going in there and tweaking that shape. Avocados. <sighs> They're a pointy oval, but they're kind of lopsided. They do just have this slightly charmy, wonky thing. Now, we're in the UK. We have small avocados. I have been to America, and I know you guys get big avocados. So that must look really kind of quite tiny. But for an illusion cake, if you're doing a proper illusion, for me, the scale needs to be right as well as the shape and the texture and everything else so what i've done is i've, I've carved my my pear my 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 avocado pear and then i've cut it in half to give me the two shapes that i'm going to need i'm going to do two shells that's what i'm going to do and show you in the demo i've then gone ahead and covered everything uh, in a layer of chocolate ganache i tend to favor ganache over buttercream uh i just I just feel safer with it, especially when you're sculpting on it and working on top of it. It just sets nice and firm. So it's just a little bit, you know, just a little bit easier. Uh, so and you can see that I've just put it on with the palette knife and I'm using a uh, scraper. And I believe Innovative Sugar Works have these too, um, just to help get the, the curve and to get the shape. So I've done the overside and then I've gone ahead and uh now doing the the flat side so what so i let that set then i turned it over and then i did the flat side and then i just popped that in the fridge for about 10 minutes to let it set so now i've taken my modeling chocolate and i would recommend modeling chocolate you could use sugar paste this is um i've used magic colors and i've used a green and a brown just to give me this slightly muddy base color um <laughs> this is true donna uh avocados are always a bit hit or miss aren't they when you cut into them <laughs> but this this is cake yeah um so what i'm doing i'm going to do two, the two different halves and i will uh, show you uh how i'm going to just seal the base of that with my layer of modeling chocolate just so that it's nice and clean we won't see that underside that's going to be sort of flat onto the onto the cake board, uh, but it's just there. It's sealed, and now I'm just covering the rest of my one half of my avocado pear in in the modelling chocolate. And as I say, you can do this with with sugar paste. Um, I just for me, modelling chocolate just is so much more forgiving. You can work on it, you know, a really really long time, uh, and it just lends itself so beautifully to sculpting. So here they are, the sugar shapers. These are my absolute, most absolute favorite tools. I do love them. Um, I have the, the, the firm variety, I have the regular variety, I have the mini variety, and I tend to swap in and out, actually, of all of them. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the ball tool here and just created that indentation. What we want to do is just to put the stalk. So when you cut an avocado in half, if you do this, the, the stalk generally will fall onto one side. You won't generally cut the stalk in half, not like if you're cutting an apple or something. So for interest, I'm going to show this half 
with with the stalk in it. So I'm just using my tools and the modeling chocolate just to tease out that shape. So I've put the indentation in and then I'm just going to, as I say, I've just working my way around with the shape. What I absolutely love about sugar shapers is that as well as the different ends for different, uh, you know, different applications, and you'll see this shortly, I tend to actually use the, the whole length of the, of the tool as well. So avocados, if you look at them, see I'm doing that there, avocados tend to have these ridges that go, that go down them. So I wanted to sort of build that in to my, to my shaping. Um, so that's what I've gone ahead and done. And I'm just working and tweaking. Thank you. Already looks brilliant. Thank you. If you're, if you're, I don't, I can't always see uh, the names of people. So if I don't say your name, it's because I don't have it up. So apologies for that. Um, but you can, see, what's lovely is that you can really get in there and really detail the points. Now, the thing is, this is a relatively, relatively simple shape um, for, for an illusion cake, but which is why you want to, it's so why you want to really sort of spend the time on just getting those little extra details, because that is what's going to make the thing really pop and, you know, come to life. I'd be interested to know from anyone watching in the UK, in the US, in Canada, in Italy, or wherever else that you're watching, um, if anyone else makes illusion cakes, if they, if it's, if it's part of their repertoire, if you're cake makers, if it's part of your repertoire, if you're a hobby baker, is it something that you like doing? They're just everywhere, aren't they, at the moment? Um, right, so let's get let's get back to it. So this here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to texture with this mat. This is from the old piping bag, and honestly, um, it I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a stone texture mat. Now, when I'm texturing any kind of, um, hey Sharon, yes, another illusion cake fan. When I'm texturing, I'm a big fan of trying to find what you have in the cupboard um, <laughs> and to use what you have. Sometimes, sometimes, if I just don't have a, a, a mat that will work, I will actually make my own molds. I will buy a putty where I combine the two the putties together and then I, I will make an impression. But because I had this mat from the old piping bag, it was it was so good for the texture of the skin that um, I decided to use it. But you could try some crunched up foil, see what's in your cupboards, have a play. If you've got the real avocado next to you, you will be able to see what is what is working. So you can just see here I'm coming back in and I'm covering the other side of the avocado. Now we're going to see this sort of bottom side down. So we're going to see the top of it. Uh, but because it's going to be slightly rocked, I still want to go ahead and texture the underside. OK, and you can see where I've been handling it. You know, sometimes you lose the mat, you lose the texture, you lose the matting. So I've just gone back in and sort of freshened it up slightly. So we're going to cover now the the cut part of the avocado where the stone is, where the pip is. I've got some of my candy clay and I'm kneading in. A little bit of yellow and a little bit of green, the inside of an avocado. And we're going to assume that we're going to, who was it that said, was it Donna that said, you can never know when you get into an avocado what you're going to get? Well, this is true. Uh, in my in my illusion cake avocado, we're going to have a nice creamy green center. They're very sort of pale and creamy. creamy. So a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. Um, but as I was working, uh, on this, I just looked at the color and just thought, do you know what? It's not quite right. So, do you remember that? There we go. Look, there's the real avocado, and it just—it wasn't. It, I'm not sure it quite picks up in the video, but it was just—it was—it was just a bit too bright. So I've taken a little bit of the brown that we covered our avocado in, and I'm kneading that in, and that's just to bring the color down. You know, one of the key things to a successful illusion cake. Well, there are lots of key things, but one of them, and we can talk about that afterwards, but one of them is really making sure that you get your color right and understanding the color and the tones. And I always tend to start pale uh, and then I will add color afterwards. 
yeah, it definitely helps having the real thing in front of you for color matching. It just makes the absolute world of world of difference because you think you know what an avocado looks like. And we all kind of pretty much do, don't we? But really, when the actual thing's in front of you, you notice things that your memory may not have remembered or picked up on. Um, so at the very at the very least, have a photograph. So you can see that I've just what I'm trying to do now is just trim that piece that's on the that's on the top of the uh, of the avocado pear so that I can get a nice clean line. So I'm going to trim what I can with the knife uh, and then I'm going to go in with the tool. Now, maybe Margarita, I'm I'm terrible at knowing what the names of the tools are. I think that's the flat edge, the flat edge chisel. It has a straight edge. Anywho, it has a straight edge. So I am just using that just to help me get that definition because there is a little rim. If you cut an avocado in half, you do see that little bit of skin rim, skin rim. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? You know what I mean, though. Um, so I'm just using that tool to help me, uh, you know, just to help me sort of get in there and, and tidy it up. And actually, as I was working on this, I could see that I was short a little bit of paste. So and again, this is why modeling chocolate is so cool, right? Because you can just add little bits in. So I just added a little bit in and again, back with the tool. Yes, you can watch on catch up and I'll put it on. I'll put it on YouTube afterwards this. So you can definitely do that. Um, you can just you can see I'm using the flat edge chisel there just to blend that extra bit of sugar paste. Uh, sugar paste of candy clay in excuse me um, and it works an absolute treat so again where I've been handling it I've gone back in with my uh with my stone matting just to help with that texture now let's get moving to the stone so I created a little chocolate kernel I used a a mold there an eyeball mold and I just poured in some chocolate I happen to have green there's no reason that you would have green um, and the reason that I have done that is because I'm just going to find you'll see when I come to make the stone shortly or the pip uh, it's, it's just easier when you have a, a kernel uh, inside I'm taking a ball tool you can see I've swapped to the larger the larger rounded edged tool uh, Again, sorry, innovative sugar works. I use them and love them all. I'm terrible at all the names, but the ball ended one. Um, and I don't need to press it in all that much, but what I do want to do is just create a little bit of an indentation um, so that the stone and the pip can sit, you know, snug inside the avocado. So I'm taking a little bit more of the candy clay and you can see I'm just forming it around that chocolate kernel that I created it's also a little you know it's quite quite a nice crunchy surprise isn't it when you when you get into it and you and you bite it um the stone is not completely round it's a sort of elongated round again it's that that sort of attention to the to the shape it's made it a lot easier for me to place it. I'm kind of happy with how that with how that looks. So we're just going to leave that to one side. So colors now. We're going to come and we're going to color our avocado. I have used ochre. I've used almond. I've used a light green, a dark green, a brown, a purple, and a black. Those are the colors that I'm using for my avocado, and I am mixing them. So I'm using petal dusts. Um, these are, I think they might be magic colors, uh, petal dusts, but anything that you have but in that palette, okay? And I'm mixing them with alcohol and I'm using um, my innovative sugar work brushes actually to paint these. I am creating a wet paint and then I'm gonna create a dry dust over the top of it. Color on an avocado is layered. So you can see, right, I started with a very sort of murky brown, which was my lightest point. I then went over with a, like an ochre. I mixed the ochre with a touch of brown so that I've got a slightly yellowy brown tinge coming through. And then I'm gonna slowly build up. So next I'm going between my, my green and my brown. And then I'm increasing the intensity of the, of the green and brown as I, as I go. 
So you can see, and what I'm doing is by dipping the brush into, into the uh, alcohol, which I'm using as a diluter, it's enabling me to create a mottled textured effect over the top of the avocado. I'm gonna do the stalky bit uh, last. So I'm just gonna come in and uh, just concentrate on getting the color into that avocado. Now I'm taking a little bit of purple. Can't see the colors very well and a little bit of brown. And um, just adding, adding that in now because the and again it's going to depend on the avocado that you have the avocados that i have that i'm copying are really quite black they're really quite black but it's not a matte black as you can see it's layered up with all of these colors so really take the time to study when you're looking at something like this the different layers of uh the different layers of color that you know, that will go through that go through the, the process. OK, you can see that uh, close up now and where we put in all of that texture, the color is running. The colors running in between all of those little nooks and crannies. It's giving you that it's just giving you that perfect bumpy texture that they have. So my final color here is the purple and black over over the top of the avocado. There we go. Uh, Kat's asking if you can get candy clay in the States. So, Kat, we currently uh, we currently don't have a supplier in the States, but we do have um, we do have uh, we are able to to ship it to the States um, uh, via some of our suppliers. So, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Oh, Donna, it might be the sand gravel texture mat. Uh, it might well be that, yes. But you could do this with, with foil. As I say, if you want to get, you know, uber fancy and uber classy, just to interrupt myself here, I've gone in with the nutmeg. This is the sort of nutmeggy almond colour. I'm coming into, into that little stalky bit of the avocado here. Um, but as I say, making your own putty moulds, you can buy it online fairly cheaply for really unique textures. Uh, that is something that I would that I would recommend. Uh, doing. All right, let's get back to the stone. I'm going to dry dust here um, and I'm using the Innovative Sugar Works uh, brushes for this. So I've got brown, I've got yellow and I've got orange. I'm using a mixture of all three and you can see, hello. Uh, now that's the name, Apple Belinda Lucidi, have I said that completely wrong? And what's your first name out of all of those? Tell me. <laughs> um, that was just so awesome. That just stopped me in my tracks. I just <laughs> I had to say hello to you. Um, so you can see I'm using the 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 innovative Sugarworks brushes, which I'm uh, available on the site, and they're really the soft brushes are great for powdering dry dust. Now I've gone for the dry on the stone because I really love the way that the uh, Belinda, ciao Belinda, <laughs> I really love the way that the uh, color just sort of spreads so organically and so uh, mutually, right? That's what I love about it. I've swapped to a smaller brush here, back in with a slightly darker brown, and I'm just creating that, that mottled effect over, over the stone. They do have a really lovely stone inside them, uh, avocados. So you can see that's why I've done it with the with the dry dust. But what I am going to do once I'm finished is we're going to set we're going to set this. Now, the stone is going to sit inside that avocado that we prepared. I want to make sure that the edging along the stone is quite dark. So I've gone in with the fine brush and I'm putting in the the, the dark sort of chocolate brown petal dust here just to help with that illusion of creating a shadow when it sits in the avocado okay so that's why i'm going ahead and doing that so once you're happy with your with your stone you want to give it a nice spritz of uh, edible glaze just to set it okay don't need to go too crazy now we're back to the avocado really important 
you need to let the all the coloring dry it needs to be completely dry before you do this next stage so what we are going to do now is we're going to add some more color but we're going to do a dry dust again with my lovely sugarworks brushes i've got purple and brown and i did actually throw in now look at that for timing last minute just a tiny bit of black just a tiny bit and I'm just using the brush to just to go over uh, the, the, the top and just to pick up any more detailing, okay? The dry dusting gives a slightly different effect to the wet paint. And what I want to do is just make sure that I am picking up all of that detail on the, on the texture. So you can see the layering of the color, you know, how much it's giving, depth to essentially what is quite a boring you know an avocado argument you know this side of it you know it's quite boring when i was looking at it i was thinking oh maybe maybe this is not the most interesting right uh, but it is interesting if you can bring out the subtle details and that's what makes for an awesome uh for an awesome illusion cake so a uh, tiny bit more detailing, just cupping the edge of that stalk with a bit of brown and the artist brushes. So let's swap back over to the other half of the avocado. Now we need to create, uh, we need to now obviously color the inside. And I'm again, I'm going back in with the dry dusting, green and yellow, and I'm mixing them together. And always when you're doing dry dusting, or any kind of coloring like this, if you're not confident of the colors that you've mixed together, my tip would always be to just have a piece of paper next to you, you know, a bit of kitchen towel or something so that you can dab the color on. And that way you can really just check that you're uh, on the right track with the color that you want. With the inside of the avocado, it does ombre. So it's darker on the outsides and then comes into the lighter. So that original lighter color that we mixed with the candy clay, we will see, but by ombreing the effect like this, um, we get that lovely scope of all colors and it's a much easier way to, to, to do it really. Um, yeah, so, and the other tip I have actually about brushes um, is to, and I don't know if anyone else does this, is that I tend to keep my brushes by color I don't wash my dry dust brushes. I just tend to dry clean them. So I will keep greens, brushes that I use just for green together and brushes that I use just for red together, that kind of thing. Does anyone else do that? Just find it much, much easier to deal with, you know, afterwards. Um, so what I'm just doing here is I'm just trying to tidy up that, that, that cut edge. I have taken a little bit of the almond, which is like a sort of, beigey a, a beigey uh, powder color and a little bit of ochre and a very very fine brush and I'm just kind of going in and just kind of tidying up that edge really in between the skin and the inside of the the inside of the avocado it's interesting I've not done an avocado before I've done lots of other uh, vegetables and fruit so this was this was a new one uh, on me but I was actually you know, kind of quite pleased with how it how it turned out. And actually, I think if you're new to, you know, illusion cake work and want to have a go, this is probably not a bad one to start with, actually. Not a bad one. So look, there is our stone. Put that in. So you can see we had one bit of glaze. I haven't overglazed it. I just wanted a tiny bit of sheen. And now I'm going in with back with my sugar shapers. This is my favorite tool, I think, out of the set. This is the tri tip chisel, it, it's called, I think. Margarita, is that right? This tri, the tri tip. It's got three points to it, but it's great for wedges, for creating wedges. So I'm just really just trying to get that stone set in there, but in a subtle way, right? And I don't want to dig stuff out from my cake because it's a small cake. So again, I'm using that tool to aid with the illusion. And then where I've created that little ridge, I'm going in with a small fine brush and a little bit of brown petal dust just around the edges again to sort of help with that uh, illusion to help with that with that control um, 
And I think, yeah, I'm just having a little bit of a tidy up then because I got a little bit messy. But that's it. You can see how the two of them now, the two pieces side by side, how they look when they're done.